praise him it's so good to be back thank you for joining us again for the engine room 2.0 and tonight our theme is the relevant church so i just want to remind you all that please comment please send in your messages if you have a prayer request we have padlet if you have a prayer support even better because we have padlet we want to hear what you, we want to hear what your prayer is so that we can pray with you we can we can pray into your situations with you because one come on now one by themselves can't do it but when many of us stand together in one accord we can do anything amen so please use padlet the links will be sent into the chats this throughout the service please do send in your prayer requests and your praise reports because we want to know what god is doing for you amen so without further ado i want to hand over to natalie lawrence from zion city tabernacle church in wolverhampton who is this evening the psalmist and she will be leading us into worship good evening everybody hi good evening good evening so the first song that i'm going to sing is god i look to you so i know we're not in person but you can still worship where you are um i can't hear you but god can hear you so <laughs> so let's all just worship together bear with me as i set up Lord, 
forever, all my days, I will love you, God. Hallelujah, I God reigns. Hallelujah, I God Come on, let's lift our praise to God. God, we love you. God, we worship you. God, there's no one like you. God, you are our rock. God, you are our shield. God, you are our strength. God, you are king. God, you rule. God, you reign. God, you take first place. We honor you, Jesus. We worship you. We lift you up, Jesus. You are God and you are great. And we thank you, God. We thank you that you are with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. We thank you, God, that you are with us right where we are, God. Lord, in the middle of the circumstance, you are with us. In the middle of the situation, you are with us. In the midnight hour, that it might feel like you are with us. And we acknowledge that God in our midst is mighty and he will save. We honor you, Jesus. We worship you. We thank you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you. And this is the sound that we're lifting to you on Engine Room 2.0 tonight. It's a sound of love. It's a sound of worship. It's a sound of adoration because we are lifting up the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we declare the praise of Jesus will be the loudest sound in our house tonight. The praise of Jesus will be the loudest sound in our street tonight. The praise of Jesus will be the loudest sound in our community tonight. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise Jesus. And I wonder if we could turn together to Luke chapter 4, verse 18. To 19, Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19, and I'll read from the NIV version. Once again, welcome all as we join together tonight. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight, for the blind to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Amen. So the theme that we are running with tonight is the relevant church. It's it's from um, the national bishop's uh, vision of being relevant, relational, and reimagining God at work. But we've we've chosen uh, to go with the relevant church tonight and one of the things when we think about this mandate in 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 Luke 4 this this outlining of the mission of believers we see that it's it's not a reactionary um church that's described it's a a proactive it's a a responsive church a strategic church and and as we pray as we focus in our prayer and the place i want us to start with a corporate prayer is understanding that 
we're responding not just to the situations that are going on around us, but we're responding to the voice of God. We're re responding to the leading of, of God's spirit, God's direction. We're being mobilized um, by God's word. We're being instructed by God's word. And we're being empowered by God's spirit as the church, the body, believers everywhere in every area. And, and, and then we are, we are reaching out to God's world. So we're thinking about, we're starting on the foundation of God's word. Then we're, we're, we're looking at the church, the collective. And then we're thinking about the, the external, the world around us. And that's the, the, the journey that our prayer is going to go on as we think about the relevant church. So let's start by praying together. Let's start by, by just saying, God, that we are, we are your church. Lord, and help me to be relevant. And we're going to be praying into that. So we're going to start by just, just opening ourselves up and saying, God, Lord, whatever you're saying, Lord, I'm open. Lord, I want to hear your word. Lord, I want to be challenged. Lord, I want to be encouraged. Lord, I want you to speak to my heart in a fresh way and, and even drop ideas or, or plans in my, in my heart and in my mind that I can become more relevant because we are the church. We are the church. The church isn't just the building. It is the building that we gather in. But, but more importantly, it's the people that gather in the building. So you are the church. And we are being made more and more relevant because that's what God's doing. So let's start by just praying together. And we're thinking about the relevance, relevance of God's word, relevance of God's church, and relevance to reach God's world. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, God that you are challenging us. Thank you, Father God, that you are calling us to be focused. You are calling us to take action, but you aren't calling us to take action in a panic, Father God. You are calling us to take action strategically. Heavenly Father, you are calling us to, to be those that would hit the target. You are calling us to be those that will hit the mark, Father God, that will, that will move, Lord, directed by your word, directed by your spirit, Lord, to the areas, Lord, that we are, we are being sent to, to the areas within our giftings, within our, our, our talents, within our capabilities, within what you've placed within us, Father God, that we will be mobilized as your body, your hands and your feet, Lord, to reach into the areas, Lord, that you would have us to go to, that we would have a word in season, Father God, that we would be those that would express your love. We would be those that would express your kindness. We would be those that express your generosity because we are relevant, Father God, that we would reach, Lord, the highways and the byways, Father God, those that are on the fringes of society, and we would recover them, Father God, because we are relevant. That we would speak life, Father God, and we would speak truth, Lord, and we would uh, be those that would advocate for justice because we are relevant, God. That we would have our eyes open, Father God, and our ears open, Lord, to see what's going on around us, but also to hear what you say about what's going on around us because we are relevant, God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that we will be equipped with the armor that you've given us, Father God to walk and to talk and to, to live a life that is victorious, Lord, because we are relevant. So help us, God, as your church. Help us, Father God, to understand it's not by our might and it's not by our power, but it's by your spirit that we move forward. We give you praise, Lord. We give you honor. And as we go forward, we thank you, Father God, that deliverance will take place tonight. We thank you, Father God, that freedom, Lord, will enter into the heart of, of someone, Lord, tonight that a family member will be rescued, that someone that had a, a negative mindset and a destructive mindset, they will be freed, Father God, because a relevant church is taking action. So we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, greetings, church. Um, I'm going to be praying for God's word. We're going to be taking it from 2 Timothy 4, verse 2. And I'm going to be reading the Amplified Version because I thought that really, and it says Amplified is what it's speaking to. So it is, preach the word as an official messenger. Be ready when the time is right and even when it is not. Keep your sense of urgency whether the opportunity seems favourable or unfavourable, 
whether convenient or, un or inconvenient, whether welcome or unwelcome. Correct those who err in doctrine or behavior, warn those who sin, exhort and encourage those who are growing towards spiritual maturity with inexhaustible patience and faithful teaching. And the King James Version kind of puts it a bit more simply and it says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And what I wanna to tackle today is those sort of like eight key points of preaching, being public in uh, knowledge, advocating for God, advocating for God's word, reproving and rebuking, correcting and seeing the areas where we may be straying away, or where we feel like the word needs to be spoken in its true form and exhorting, being encouragement to one another as we've called to do, to share the word. We can't share the word alone. We have to have a support system in place and being faithful and looking towards um, the future. So that is the key points that I'll be praying with if you wanna pray with me. So Lord, thank you Lord that we can be here today to speak to the relevancy of your church, Lord, for your mission and your business always included the church, dear Lord. So, Lord, as we come together, give us the heart, Lord, to speak from, to speak to you, and Lord, and to speak to others, Lord. Lord, I pray that the word that you put, I pray, Lord, the word that you put inside of us will not die and will not end with us, dear Lord. But that the word that you have put inside of us will be go forth and to spread, dear Lord. Lord, that we will be consistent in your teachings, dear Lord, that we will not take the word and use it and pick and cherry pick the elements, Lord, but we'll use it in its entirety and its fullness, dear Lord, for there's power in the fullness of the word, O oh Lord. May we be true, dear Lord, to reading and knowing, Lord, what you have said on topics, dear Lord, that we may be able to speak to others, those who do not know you, those who want to know you but don't know how to, Lord, may we be able to use your word to speak with them and share your glory with them, dear Lord. So many people may not know you, Lord, but I may not read for themselves, or th but they will see us. They will see us in our actions, dear Lord. So may we be without rebuke, O oh Lord. May we speak and act as you've called us to do so in your word, dear Lord. May we speak, Lord, knowing we have used our discernment, dear Lord, that comes from you. Knowing, dear Lord, that as we speak your word, dear Lord, we have been given the, we have been given the authority by you, Lord, to do so. And Lord, as we go into this world with so many different issues, so many different thoughts and opinions, dear Lord, so many people telling us what is right and what is wrong, dear Lord, may we know that it is in your word, your very relevant word, O oh Lord, that has the truth, that is in your word, O oh Lord, that we will know what is right and what is wrong. And as the scripture says, Lord, that your word is always in season, dear Lord. And even if, Lord, when it is our time, Lord, may we be continuing, Lord, to learn, continuing, Lord, to learn for ourselves, Lord, that when the time has come for us to speak out, oh Lord, we will, we will speak out in confidence, dear Lord, and in wisdom, oh Lord, that we will know your doctrine, dear Lord, that we, that we, that we will be faithful, Lord, in our studying of you, Lord, that we can speak and clearly say, Lord, that you are God and God alone, that there's none before you, and there'll be none after you, Lord for you reign supreme. So give us this encouragement, dear Lord, today to speak and Lord, to share your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, again. <laughs> Let me just check my audio is on. There we go. This next song that I'm going to sing is I Speak Jesus and that it just echoes what Sasha Mani um, was just saying and you know whatever you're facing whatever you're going through speak Jesus speak Jesus through it speak Jesus over it and I just think it's such a powerful song um, you know listen to the words and and worship, worship with us, praise him for what he's done, praise him for what he's going to do for you. Mm -hmm. 
I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom, I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every fear and every heart. To every soul held captive by depression. I speak Jesus, your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life, break every stronghold, break shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Shout Jesus in the mountain. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Cause your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Cause your name is power, and your name is healing, and your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Oh, I speak Jesus. Oh.
the name of Jesus. Amen. I speak Jesus. Ooh, I love that song. I love it. Amen. Love it. Amen. Can we can, can we just take a moment? Amen. And just speak the name of Jesus. Can we just take a moment? Whether you unmute yourselves or you stay on mute, it's fine. Just give him glory for what Hallelujah. You Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord, that you made in the name of Jesus. Lord, I speak the name of Father God, tap our hands, Father God, Father God, Father God, Thank you. 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 God. Hallelujah. 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 I'm gonna good morning, Sister Natalie. The topic that I'll be praying over is love for one another, the church. So the scripture that I'll be reading from is taken place from John 13, verse 35 which reads, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So just to give a bit of more context to that, I'll read the previous verse, 34, which says, so now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I've loved you. You should love each other. And that's taken from the New Living Translation. So to grasp the depth of what Jesus was trying to say here, we need to dissect a bit more. So the word love, it's not just a throwaway word that we use here and there, it's multifaceted. So the Bible demonstrates these three types of love. There's eros, which is romantic love. There's philos, which is friendship love. And then there's agape, which is unconditional love. And Jesus continuously throughout the Bible talks about agape, which is unconditional love, that where we don't respect anything in return for showing it. When he uses the term one another, it in both verses, he's referencing us as brethren, which is further emphasized in 1 John, where the importance of loving our brothers and sisters is highlighted. Of course, this doesn't solely mean loving one another just within the church and within those four walls. It's talking about everyone um, who we encounter. Matthew 5 states, um, well, Jesus instructs us in Matthew 5 that we should love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. So it's not just talking about just Christians, it's talking about the wider church. And we see this further demonstrated in 1 John 4, 20 to 21, which in the New King, King James Version says, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. But he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God who he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. In our society, love must be more than just words or stories. It's an action, it's a commitment, it's a demonstration of God's call to us. Jesus didn't just speak about love, he demonstrated it. And as his disciples, our actions should reflect our teaching, transforming us into his likeness. Love has the power to change lives. While, it, while we may not possess 
material things like silver and gold, our love alone can be instrumental in transforming the lives of others. It's not just about speaking a love language, it's about actually living the language of love. Uh, we all know this, this song that says, what's love got to do with it? Well, the answer to that is everything. God's love for us was so profound that even while we were sinners, God loved us and continues to love us. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, how can we believe, sorry, how can we as believers show love to those who are filled with anger or hatred? And the answer to that is by remembering Jesus' sacrifice. Even though he, was, he had a crown of thorns placed into his head and he was pierced in his side and he was betrayed by his own disciples, he continued to demonstrate love. And the love that he demonstrated was unparalleled. So that's my thoughts of this topic. So I'll just pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity for us to come into your presence once again. Thank you that despite sins and our wicked ways, that you continue to demonstrate an unconditional level of love. Thank you for the vision that you've implanted into our hearts, Lord, which is the relevant church. Thank you that despite the sins that we have committed, Lord, that you have placed this vision on, into our hearts, Lord, so that we can demonstrate love in a, in a way that will transform the lives of others. Lord, I pray that as your word demonstrates for us to love one another, that you will, show us, you will continue to show us the way to love each and every each and every person that's within the church and outside of the church of God. I pray that as we navigate life, lives will reflect what you have shown in, in your word. I pray that as we face adversity, Lord, that you will, you will continue to show us how to love each other, even in that face of adversity. I pray that as a church which aims to be relevant, Lord, that you will use us as your instruments of love and that we can help to transform the lives of others. I pray that you will cleanse us from unrighteousness and use us as vessels to pour out love to others, Lord. I pray that you will use us as a mouthpiece to speak words of affirmation and love to those who feel that they can't experience that love. Pray for the lost souls, Lord, that also feel as if they're so distant from you that they, they just can't feel that love, Lord. I pray that you will use us as an example to, to show them what Christ's love is about. I also pray for the education systems. As we know, in these modern times, there you sit and indoctrinate young people into this warped concept of what love is. Pray for the schools, the universities, the colleges. Also pray for governments as well, Lord. You know, the type of messages that they're trying to send out to people with this warped ideology of what love is, and it's not a Christ-centered love. Pray that you will use us as lights in a stark world to demonstrate what the love of God actually shows us in the Bible. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, and I pray that you continue to be with us. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Oh, we are truly a relevant church. Praise God. What's love got to do with it? Amen. That's it. Evangelize with Tina Turner. Praise him. Oh, glory. Thank you, James. Thank you. We are going to be moving over to the wonderful Reverend Virginia Thomas, who is our National Chaplaincy Director. So please, Rev, go for it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Minister Rick Guan. I thank you also to Pastor Linford and all you wonderful um, members of the Body of Christ, young, middle-aged, and um, Everyone here, I'm honored to be here to join. I recognize my time limit is 20 minutes. And so I've been asked to share about 
the relevant church in relation to chaplaincy as the former national chaplaincy director. Um, firstly, I just want to thank Natalie for singing the song, I Speak Jesus. You know, I've been preparing this message for the last week or so and um, I, the word that came to me back was to be a relevant church, we have to speak Jesus, speak Jesus, preach Jesus, teach Jesus, be Jesus to others who may never go through the church doors. We have to be like Christ or Christ-like. And, you know, I just want to give God thanks for the way he uses us all in ministry. And I just like to encourage, uh, I know this is for our young people who's got an amazing future God has for you ahead. And I just like to say, having, I get, I've got more years behind me than ahead of me. Some of you have got more ahead than behind. I just like to say, embrace all that God has for you in the fullest of ways. Do not limit God. Do not limit yourself what God is doing in your life. Go beyond expectation because God is a God of exceeding abundance. I just want to say that. And, and I was meditating on where to begin, but one of the things I want to say is thank God for the church, the body of Christ, wherever you are placed, where God has placed you, it's a mission field. Your mission may not be in China or America or um, Ukraine, but your mission and calling is wherever God wants you to be. And sometimes what we do, we compartmentalize what we do. We do church and then go to work. We do church and see our family. We do church and go shopping. But everything we do is about Christ. All what we do is ministry. All that we do is serving. So try and see everything you do that God has a way as we are part of the great tapestry of God's great, beautiful kingdom that we are fulfilling the tapestry and fulfilling the calling on our lives. And when we look back, we could see where God has taken us in the good times and the bad so that he can perfect what he has begun in us, in you and for me. The reason I'm saying that is coming to chaplaincy for me was quite late in the day. When I look back, I could see how God has placed the pieces of my life together, even before I became a Christian to where I am now, and how he has done it for his divine purpose and glory, and allow the God of our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit use you to do the will of the Father. Why I say that is, I began with um, my background is social work um, as a minister. I, I got saved in New Testament Church of God in Sh uh, Sheffield. And as soon as I got saved, I got involved in every area of ministry. That's why I'm saying this even before I come to chaplaincy. I got involved in Bible studies, home prayer group, um, mobile ministry, which we called evangelism, um, youth and Christian education. So I'm a former youth pastor. Um, I worked in youth and Christian education for 10 years and I loved it. I got involved with working with young people who were the most amazing. I was, it's amazing working with young people. It's my passion. I love working with young people. They are willing to, to grow, willing to make mistakes and it's okay. And it's amazing. So as young people, don't limit God in ministry. Don't limit him in any way. Um, and he Muted. Whilst I was serving in Nottingham, I had the opportunity to visit, um, get involved in prison ministry, as it was called, uh, in Loudham Grange, a private prison. And my first experience for some people going in with all the keys and various things, it can be quite daunting. But we went in a group and it for me, it was amazing. It was a men's prison. Um, we had all ages of men and a lot came to the chapel. 
and many we didn't know what crimes they committed but it didn't matter if you're anxious and nervous about it it's not for you but for me and others we came to worship God we came to share our testimony and we came to speak a word into their lives and and through that experience I discovered that there is no one outside of God's scope God will go anywhere for his love, as thank you for the word about love, that we have to demonstrate the love of Christ. And for me, the scripture that, that really um, epitomizes the chaplaincy and the role of going beyond the church walls is taken from Isaiah 61, 1 to 2. Um, Pastor Linford and I didn't consult together, but when I saw his brief and saw Luke um, chapter 4, 18 to 19, that, that was very scripture I also referred to. So I'm going to read a little what I've got here. In Isaiah 61, 1 to 2, he foretells, the prophet foretells of the Messiah, the anointed one, Jesus Christ, declaring the good news of salvation. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Equally in gospel uh, of Luke, so the, the prophet was speaking of the forthcoming Messiah, the anointed one. And then in Luke, the Messiah, the anointed one, enters the synagogue and boldly announces the very words that have been spoken, which was the declaration of his mission and ministry of good news of the gospel of the kingdom of God to his disciples and ultimately to the entire church. So he gave his mandate right there from the Old Testament into the New Testament for the purpose of the disciples. And further on, as we go into the book of Acts, that's what we were commanded to do by the power of the Holy Spirit. So his mandate and mission is very much relevant now as it was 2000 years ago. And, and before I move on to that, Matthew 25, 35 to 40, further reminds us similarly to the mission of Jesus. And he spoke it, so he's relational. This concept is the relational Jesus. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and gave you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did, um, and, or when did we see you um, sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, assuredly, I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Those words are powerful when you let them sink in. It makes you realize that whatever we do and whoever we call to, whoever they are, we need to reach people and we need to preach Jesus. We need to speak Jesus. And as a church, we have been given the mandate, the great commission, as it were, to speak Jesus, preach Jesus, teach Jesus, teach Jesus who is our savior, our redeemer, our healer of the brokenhearted the liberator, the deliverer, setting the captives free, the savior of the world, the suffering servant, the lamb upon the throne, whose blood was shed for the sins of mankind. Preach Jesus, who became sin for us. Preach Jesus, who was wounded for our transgressions. Preach Jesus, who was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Speak Jesus. Jesus who was born, hallelujah, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Preach Jesus in the prisons, preach Jesus in the mental hospitals, preach Jesus on the street to the homeless, 
preach Jesus, hallelujah, who is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus, the high priest, who is touched by the feeling of our infirmities and in all points were tempted like we are, yet without sin. Preach Jesus, the one who come, we can come to boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find help in time of need. In this fallen world, we need to preach Jesus. We need to speak Jesus because we're living in a fallen world, a sin sick world where people need Jesus. We have power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. And for those of you who are curious about chaplaincy, come taste and see that the Lord is good and his mercies endureth forever. Much of what I've said about deliverance and healing and revelation of Jesus, I've seen with my own eyes as a chaplain. And I'm sure Pastor Linfen can say the same, the transforming power of Jesus in the prisons on lives of those who are probably on, um, on for prison, uh, crimes they've committed, but they are not beyond the reach of Jesus. People whose lives have been um, abused, through abuse, they've caused crimes and committed serious crimes. And yet the power of Jesus has entered their, not just their ears, but entered their very hearts. So their lives have been transformed. I work as a chaplain in a medium secure private hospital in Northampton called St. Andrews. And I've been there for nine years and I've been completely transformed by seeing the people who come in and out of those doors. Now, it's not like a general hospital where there's a high turnover. The people I work with and my team works with have, are there for a long time. Some people are there for five years. Some people have been there for 10 years, for 15 years. Um, but ultimately, it's a private hospital, medium secure. So we're like a hospital, but also um, we're not a prison, but we have to detain people because their liberty, their freedom has been um, detained. They've been detained under the Mental Health Act where they cannot leave the hospital. They're under the Ministry of Justice because of certain crimes they've committed. They've been to prison, but because of their mental health, they've come to us and we have to take care of them. With a prison, there's an end date when they can leave. But in a mental health hospital where I work, it depends. It, it's not like they don't have an end date. There has to be an agreement with the psychiatrist, the psychologist, and so on. However, in that time, we've seen the journey of patients, many of them who don't want to be there. But I've seen over the years I've been that patients, um, many people come with their faith. Some people lose faith when they come here. Some people come to faith while they're here. We have people who are baptized. We are, just two weeks ago, there was um, a young, per, young woman who was water baptized and, and you know came to Christ. We have people coming to the chapel. We have a chapel in the grounds and we have a chapel where people can come and worship. Um, and so it's an awesome experience. I've sat with people, we have, I work with women and men, but mainly on women's wards. I'm the only female chaplain. I work within a multi-faith team. So we have imams from the Muslim faith. We have um, other Church of, uh, the Church of England chaplain. I work with another Pentecostal chaplain, praise the Lord, um, and a Baptist. And we have people of faith and no faith. So we have um, pagan chaplains, would you believe? We have... Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, we have Mormons, we have humanists uh, as volunteers who can come in if that's the faith of the patient. We have, they have a right to ask for that request. Um, and because of that, we have to make sure their spiritual needs are being met. We're also there for patients of no faith, and we're also there for staff as well. We very much have been supporting staff. We conduct funerals, memorial services, um, but basically we do quite a lot. We're really the pastor um, of the patients, that's the equivalent. 
and our the numbers are huge. We have uh, about 400 patients on site uh, and we work in various teams. And I would say in terms of chaplaincy and as chaplains, it's about speaking the word. Genesis 1.1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, declaring the triune God, the creator. And in John 1.1, 1, 1, 1 to 3, Jesus, the eternal word, is the God in creation. We speak Jesus, the living word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things that were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. One of the things of speaking Jesus is that it gives people hope and that um, the fact is God sent his forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, we are no longer slaves, but a son of God. Um, one of the things what I've learned, people are bound in their minds and their minds have to be renewed. We know in Romans it tells us, be not conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind. So our role as chaplains is we cannot proselytize, but we can share. And those of faith, we can share Jesus. And the biggest challenge and, and interesting thing is, as a chaplain, we, are, we, we have to show the love of God without even speaking Jesus. So our very behavior, our way we are, um, people can see Jesus in us. We can visit patients and patients who don't have a faith often watch us. I've many times patients have said, can I speak to you? And only because they see something in that other patient when, we, when I come to see them, we can pray with them, we can rescripture to them. So we have such a powerful testimony and we have a, such a powerful role in the life of the hospital. I've seen so many lives transformed and also the lives of their families change because you know Jesus is real. Whatever mental health may be, the spirit of within them, the soul is crying out for God. And even with mental health, people know when they need help. I have people who self-harm, who want to commit suicide. The suicide spirit is very strong but also that can be broken. I've, heard, I've been with people who hear voices and they put in the, the, the voices of Jesus and singing so the voice of Jesus can override the voices they hear. Finally, I know time is coming to, to close. I've got five more minutes. About chaplaincy. We can celebrate in New Testament Church of God as part of our 70th anniversary. Seven, 31 years as a chaplaincy team, we have been doing great things across the country. The greatest area of chaplaincy is in prisons. But one of the things we want to do is widen that remit. So for example, um, we now, we have chaplains in healthcare, we have chaplains in universities. Um, we have seven regional leads across the country in the West Midlands. Uh, London region, Southwest region, Wolverhampton and Staffordshire region, Thames Valley region, Northern region and East Midlands region, where there's many experiences of where prison uh, visitors or chaplaincy volunteers has visited men and women in prisons when their lives have been saved, they've come to Christ, they've preached Jesus and they've come to Jesus. They've moved on, they've got on with their lives, and God has blessed them. And that's what we want to do, work in the power and the transforming work in the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. So what can you do? What is it you want to know? One thing I want to say is um, a couple of years ago, um, I one of our young people, I got her to design a flyer um, that talks about chaplaincy. Um, and simply put, on the question of chaplaincy, how can we integrate chaplaincy as a ministry area within your local church? So one, two questions to ask. Is, is someone in your church interested in chaplaincy? Does your church currently have a chaplaincy involvement? And if so, is it recognized as part of church ministry? 
One of the things I'd like to say that chaplaincy is about ministering to our community across institutions. Uh, the mission of chaplaincy is bringing the gospel message of God's love, hope, meaning and purpose in the lives of those we encounter, such as demonstrated by the compassionate care of the Good Samaritan, or as I read in Matthew 25. And I just want to leave a couple of examples of how chaplaincy as a ministry can make such a difference in your life and in the life of your church, in our church, as the body of Christ, outside the church walls. Um, I'd like to honor and recognize Bishop Deverton Douglas from Hansworth Church, Pastor Linford, and um, our dear Mrs. Karen Ellis, who's training at the moment to, into the pastorate. I just want to give God thanks for them. I remember Karen, who's on the CPC, sat down at a meeting saying, I want to do something more. I want to do something more. And she spoke about going beyond the church walls and she spoke about chaplaincy. And Bishop Devonton Douglas heard her heart. And alongside women's ministry, men's ministry, youth ministry, evangelism, he made a distinct decision that chaplaincy should be a ministry area all by itself. Already there was a lot of chaplaincy working anyway in that area in, 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 in Birmingham. He gave her a smaller budget and now there is a thriving chaplaincy within Hansworth in many different areas more than what I've even mentioned here. Secondly, I want to also mention in College Street, Northampton, Bishop Donovan Allen, give respect to him, my pastor. We have a demonstration of chaplaincy ministry across three, at least three areas. Reverend Paulette Darby Johnson is um, our district and local youth pastor, and she's doing amazing things with young people. She is incredible. She, they visit the Bed Bedford prison with um, Reverend um, um, Hines, Dennis Hines. I think it's once a month. Um, obviously they're over 18 and it's been amazing. Young people going in the prison, she mobilizes them there. She also is part of involved with university chaplaincy. One of the best ways of any institutions is going along there to Freshers Week. Every city, every town has a university. My challenge and, and, and opportunity for you is come along to Freshers' Week. Young people, we see young people at Freshers' Week starting university far from home. We have a very thriving university chaplaincy in Northampton, amen. And thirdly, we have a, also a team of chaplains visiting where I work uh, in St Andrews for the last, I think since 2017, we have chaplains coming in, in the chapel in the morning, and on, in the afternoon, we have what we call prayer and praise, where we have, we go on the wards or, or just areas outside the wards where we share a theme, it could be love, grace, whatever it can be, and then we have an opportunity to share with those who come along about the word of God. Nothing is more powerful than the awesome word of God as we preach under the anointing and we worship and sing and speak Jesus. I'm going to stop there because I know time is gone. And I just want to say that do not limit chaplaincy. Do not limit. Chaplaincy is demonstrating the father heart, the God, the father, the love of God, Abba Father. Chaplaincy is demonstrating compassionate care. Chaplaincy is sharing Jesus to whoever that may be. Share Jesus. Regardless of what they've done or where they've been, there is no one outside the scope of the love of Jesus. Like the prodigal son, however far he went, his father God, father was waiting for him to come back. After he'd eat at the pig's food, he realized, I have to come home. Let us pray. Father God, you are the God of love, the God of grace, the God of mercy, the God of the broken, 
the God of the abused, the God of the homeless, the God of the hungry, the God of the sick, the God of the bound, those in prison right now. But God, we thank you for your transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Before Jesus left the earth, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send my Holy Spirit. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord, the third person of the Trinity that dwells and lives within us. We're thankful, O oh God, for the power of God that has transformed lives and turned lives around. Lord, let us be like the Good Samaritan. Let us not walk across the road when we see someone, God, who is broken or sick, but pour in the oil and the wine. Hallelujah. Let us speak Jesus to someone on the street. Let us bring food to somebody who's hungry. Let us give clothing to those who need it. Let us give drink to those who are thirsty. Let us visit the sick in prison. And when we do that, Lord, we're doing it unto you. So let us not just speak Jesus. Let us live Jesus. Let us walk Jesus. Let us talk Jesus. Only by knowing Jesus, the living word. So let the Jesus in me, the Jesus in you, be seen because he is the light of the world. So others can see that Jesus is coming again and no one is outside of his scope. He forgives us, he loves us because he came back and he's coming again. Are we able to reach Jesus? Are we able to reach others to reach Jesus? People need the Lord. And we are the ones with the power of the Holy Spirit, the dunamis power to reach out and share a word of God into those who need Jesus. Amen. 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 Bless God. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Virginia. Um, chaplaincy is uh, something that's just so, so close and so dear to my heart. Having served as a uh, mission coordinator and working with chaplains for the last eight years. Um, if you don't know me, my name's Phil Gray. I'm the National uh, Youth and Discipleship Director for New T. Um, and I, I want to thank uh, Pastor Linford for kind of opening up this space um, as part of the kind of the program this evening. On uh, Wednesday morning, a young lady, uh, a 15 year old girl was stabbed to death, uh, murdered in Croydon on her way to school. And um, I don't know about you, but it, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's weighed heavy on my heart after hearing um, what had happened and after hearing the death of another one of our, our young people. Um, and um, yeah, where I'm at is, you know, often when things like this happen, the it, what's often asked is, well, where is the church? What's the church doing? Where's the church in this? And uh, Reverend Virginia, just... But what you what you just spoke about, I think, speaks so powerfully um, into that. Um, and I loved what you were saying at the start that um, what I got from it is that God is strategically positioning us in different areas and in different spaces and in different places. And wherever we are, whatever we do, whether we're a mechanic, whether we are a minister, whether we're a doctor or a nurse or a, a street sweeper, whatever we're doing, we are called to be witnesses of Jesus. Um, and we are we are there to be witnesses of uh, the power and the transformative power of the gospel of Jesus Christ to change um, and transform lives. And I really believe that when we do that um, consistently, we reach lives and we reach people that we don't even we don't even realize the depth and the power of what we're doing because the Holy Spirit uses us to speak into lives. You know, it could be that person that is ready to commit suicide or ready to commit a heinous crime. Uh, but by meeting us who carry 
uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, Christ within us, the hope of glory, uh, that we're able to give them uh, hope, we're able to give them a different perspective um, and, and change what they're doing. And as I said, the kind of people often say when, when tragedies happen like this, especially in the black community, well, what's, what's the church doing? Where's the church? Um, and I was reading a, um, I was reading a news article uh, from what happened in uh, one of the, yeah, one of the paragraphs on the news article, it speaks to a guy called um, Anthony King. And it says, Anthony King, chairman of My Ends, a project helping combat youth violence in Croydon, was with the girl's family after the incident and said that they were heartbroken. Um, and Anthony King is a pastor in South Croydon. I think it's interesting that the, uh, <laughs> that the article didn't state that. But the fact is, is that we are there. We are strategically positioned. And sometimes we want to act in the moment and do something big. But actually, it's what are you doing consistently? What are you giving your time to? You know, stuff like chaplaincy is an amazing way to reach people who may never, ever set foot in, in a church. Uh, but we're able to reach them with the gospel. Um, and I've been speaking to uh, Rev Rachel Tracy, who's the um, district youth director. Uh, for West Croydon um, and she's been she was on the on the scene this morning um, and was able to have some interaction uh, with some young people and I'm just going to pass up hand over to Rachel just to just to share your heart on um, you know what's been happening what you've been hearing um, and yeah what, what whatever God's laid on your heart sis God bless you God bless you everyone good evening um... Thank you for everything that has been said and that has been prayed so far. Um, let's keep it real. When things like this happen, whirlwinds um, is close to um, our hearts because we're a part of that community. Um, and so, as Phil said, the, the, first, the first response sometimes is an emotive response, you know? Um, but but we shared today, um, Phil, and I also shared with um, some others as well that we don't want to, as the church, be just first responders. We want to be responders that last. Um, and so we have to think about it. And it's been said, Phil shared yesterday um, or perhaps the day before a video. Um, just just about what had happened, uh, that that we that we have to be diligent in our serving we have to be consistent in what we're doing and I kind of had three points um just to share very quickly and then I'll hand back over to Phil to pray we've been praying and fasting um today um for the community for the situation for young people um the first of the three points that I wanted to say was all things work together for the good even though it doesn't seem good to any of us and it's senseless all things work together for the good of, for, of those who love the Lord. And why that came to mind was because things like this is a wake up call for the church. Situations, circumstances like these remind us that there are some really heavy hitting things that are happening. Not only do we need to respond to the bereaved family, friends, the ripped apart uh, community, but we also need to think about what makes a young man wake up and put a machete in his pocket and, and, and leave the house and have flowers in one hand, but a lethal weapon in, in the other, you know? So, so um, reflecting on that, we, we, we as a church, we get a wake up and, and that that's where we go to point two, which I've already said, which is about how, how we respond to these things. Um, I won't labor the point, chaplaincy is great. Um, our presence is great. What I will see, sorry, what I will say um, is that is something that I had reflected on, on a whole different topic in the book of John 4. Um, it was about the heart of true worship um, at the weekend. Um, but what I saw was that there's this woman and she came to the well with a need. And there are needs all throughout our communities, not just when something tragic like this happens. There are needs. And what our responsibility as the church is, is to go out beyond our comfort zones, as we have heard, and we are to meet needs. 
And sometimes we think that because we're not, so let me just speak to this myth, because we're not hand clapping or because we're not, you know, foot stomping or shaking a tambourine. I don't mean any disrespect when I say that. Sometimes we think that we're not doing ministry. But let me just speak to that and let you know that at the point of needs, when we start to meet needs, when we start to live the tr- in, in the truth of who we have been called to be by God, that is when change begins to be facilitated. I think the, the, the story of the Samaritan woman on Jesus may be one of the longest or the longest conversation that we see Jesus having with anybody. And to that, I say when we hold people in conversation for long enough, that is when we start to see change. So we shouldn't become dissuaded. I'm sure as chaplains who are on the line, you see it might feel as though people are not coming or, you know, you speak to people to no avail sometimes or you try to minister to no avail. But it's about holding them in conversation and continuing to be the light. So I think it's a wake up call for the church. I think it's um, a point of encouragement for us to ensure that we are diligent and consistent, as our National Youth Director has already said in um, our ministry. And I'll just quickly share before um, I just hand over to to Phil um, that, yes, as he said, I was on the scene. And let me tell you what I saw when we talk about needs. You will never meet a need in your absence. So you have to be present. You have to be there. Something that um, I saw under the leadership of our um, administrators, uh, Bishop, Bishop Grandison, was so many different things. Oh, my goodness. I had to write them down. He made connections with um, community leads and MPs. He um, made partnerships with with a school which went from special measures to to goods with with um, outstanding leadership. He made good police connections. We had civic services. The point I'm making is that there was a presence. Okay, so I want to speak to the myth again. We don't have to do both. Okay, we are one in Christ and we can be who we are wherever he sends us to be because there are needs. I I stood, I went, I actually went to the scene today to lay flowers, spoke to some people, gave some hugs where hugs needed to be. I didn't know what I was there to do, but just me being there, my presence there meant that somebody who needed to speak, somebody who needed a prayer, people who needed to cry were able to do that. Now, if we hold, as I said, people in conversation for long enough, we are able to engage them. We are able to introduce them. Somebody said earlier, a young woman said earlier that we, we're basically the Bible that they read, the way we interact. So let's just think about um, being consistently present um, in the ways that we can in our communities. And let's not think that we're not doing ministry if we're not sitting behind a drum or standing on a pulpit or holding a mic or any of those things. Okay, Um, God bless you. I'm going to hand back over to Phil to to pray. Well, bless God, Reverend Rachel. That that was just a a word in season. Well done. Um, Yeah, praise God. I just want to uh, acknowledge uh, our Bishop, uh, Bishop Grandison and, and Sister Sonia who are on here this evening. Also, Bishop Hay is on here, um, the the pastor at West Croydon Church. Um, Yeah, and uh, yeah, just want to acknowledge you both. Um, I'm I'm down to pray this prayer, but if if either of you uh, would want to go ahead, just wave your hand, um, and I'm happy to, uh, (laughs) I'm happy to turn that over to you. If not, I'm, I'm very happy to. To, to lead this prayer. So Bishop A or Bishop Grandison, uh, just give me a wave if either one of you want to take this. Okay, Bishop A is here. So he's Bishop A is the pastor at uh, West Croydon Church. Uh, so, sir, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Phil. And, um, you know, I just wanted to just say um, thank you for the prayers that are, are going up at this moment for Croydon. I'm actually on... Um, three weeks leave and this incident happened on Wednesday. I've been in contact, regular contact with the, with the the ministers in the area and also just liaison with the church. Um, I've got in on my leave to return back to be a part of what is going on, going on there. And so I'll be, I'll be back um, in Croydon um, tomorrow. Um, You mentioned an Anthony King, um, you know, one of the activists in the area very much, um, a part of the community, a, a, a person that 
um, you know, gets involved right at the very heart of things that is happening in West Croydon. I know that Bishop um, Grandison and um, Anthony King stood, um, um, I think it was, um, I can't remember how many, uh, I'm in the period of time now, and I'd um, proclaimed that there will be no more um, deaths of, of um, young people in Croydon. And I know that this is hell for a good time. There has been incidents and, you know, there's been difficulties that's been going on for a while. But what I'm saying is, and I think Reverend Rachel um, has, has stated this very clearly, that our presence is so important in that environment and that the, the church cannot just go on as business as usual because we are connected to the community. We are a part of the community. All the things that we're doing um, with the community, we are very much connected and we cannot um, override this. And I have had um, conversations with people far and wide on this matter while I, I'm just coming from the Lake Districts at the moment. And, um, you know, so much people have been speaking into this situation. It's touched so many hearts. And um, I think, um, you know, the prayers that we are praying, please remember Croydon. I'm asking you to remember Anthony King. He actually sent a message on on the pastor's um, WhatsApp. And one of the things that he's he's asking for is for prayer because he's absolutely, um, uh, how can I put it? He said that he's, he's really tired because he right at the beginning from Wednesday, he's been supporting the family, being to the family home when the news had broken and all those kind of different things and all the various different things right at the front. And so the pastors are sort of rallying around, sort of supporting him as one of the, the, the figureheads in terms of, of what is happening here. So I'm asking you to continue to pray um, for this situation and pr pray as we're praying. We're also, yes, we're praying for the family of um, Elaine and, and her family, but also there's also the family of the young man. You know, sometimes we, uh, the, 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 the situation may, may make us feel that, yeah, the, you know, the, the young man's being arrested and so on and so forth and what he done or whatever. The, the enemy has got in on this, the devil, uh, you know, and and, and and demonic spirits have, have have been involved in this. We still are praying for his family and praying over this situation. So we're asking for um, um, continued continued prayer as we pray into this. And we're not saying that this is the only situation that is happening in um, you know in 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 the country. But I feel this one this this really touched the chord. This one's touched the court somewhere, and, and people that have been contacting me, it's really touched them for, for the reasons that it has, and I think is important. As a church, you know, we're, we're talking about being relevant. Relevance is that we're standing in, in the place of where people are, standing in the position, you know, Reverend um, Rachel going, laying flowers, anything that we can do to, to make, make the community aware that we're not just behind walls, that we are very much a part of what is going on in the name of Jesus. So really thank you for the opportunity. I don't know if Bishop Grandison wanted to come in on that because I know that we had some conversation via text um, over the um, um, last few days. Um, and if not, we can pray. No, Bishop, you go ahead and pray. Um, and, and just want to appreciate you for cutting your leave short um to be here to respond to this situation um ah, this this you know that, that that fills me with a lot of joy and peace to know that people are more important to us than the the very things that we hold i mean i know your your time is is precious and you need that time away for you to come and to respond to things in this manner at this time i think is 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 vital and that sends a a very loud signal to the community. Um, I will be in London tomorrow and um, I'm gonna do my best to, to, to make my way towards Croydon um, at some point before I head back to Northampton. So, um, but you go ahead and pray, Bishop. Um, what we're doing here, folks, what we're doing here is, is, is so important, it's prophetic. Um, and the enemy, I think he's overplayed his hand. He's overplayed his hand. And um, our response is, is 
is not a knee-jerk reaction. We've been praying beforehand. Um, the one thing I have been concerned about, and I'm, this is not a dig at anyone, is that you know, generally, generally in September, we, we dedicate the entire month to prayer. Mm. It's, and, 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 you know, we mustn't think that the enemy is letting up mm. one iota. You know, um, he is working over time. So we just need to, we, we need to sometimes even just regroup and re, just change our strategy, rethink, reimagine prayer and say, okay, you know what? We didn't have this plan before, but guess what? For the next how many days, weeks, whatever, it's prayer coupled with um, action that's going out. And, and those of us who can't get to Croydon, then your prayers bombard. Listen, send those fiery prayers. Send it. Send those missiles in the name of Jesus. Name demons. Name territories name Top Boy and films and all these things that are instigating all kinds of violence. We cast it down in the name of Jesus and we're declaring God's peace. We're declaring God's peace and, and anything that is triggering our young people, anything that is triggering our young people, I don't, whether it be drill music or whatever music or, or content of any kind, we, can't, we shut it down. We're not being, we're not being hysterical. We're not being hyped in any way. We're just saying we can't take any chances with anything. We can't take any chances with any kind of media. And we're shutting down everything so that, um, that to safeguard. This is, this, is, this is proper safeguarding here. Right? This has nothing to do with DBS. This is a spiritual safeguarding mm -hmm. to make sure that our children are safe. It doesn't matter if they go to private schools or whatever. You're not safe. The fact that you have to leave your house to go somewhere, it means that any one of our children are targets. And so we need to up our defenses in prayer. So Bishop, hey, you go ahead and pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we pray concerning this situation, Lord, we are aware of the presence of your Holy Spirit helping us. Lord, because there are times, oh Father, as we re wrestle with what is going on. As your word tells us that we're wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. We know, Father, that the enemy knows that his time is short. And we know, Father, that the whole of creation, that the groanings and all that is going on, Father, is taking place in a situation, Father, where men's hearts are failing them for fear, where we are seeing disintegration of things that were foundational, Father, <laughs> causing there to be a situation and a vacuum where the enemy wants to come in. But in the name of Jesus, Father, as we pray over this situation, Father, we are asking you by the power of your spirit, Father, to speak into this situation. Lord, we pray over Elaine's family. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Lord, some of us have got children. Some of us have got grandchildren who are this age. And for your child to leave out as, and, and to go to their, their, their respective places, Father, and not feeling safe, Father. We are praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the power of your spirit would undergird our children, would undergird our community would undergird, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we stand in the gap, Father, and as the church stands in the gap against the spirit, the spirit of the age that is coming, oh Lord, and causing havoc in our streets, havoc in our families, havoc in our schools, Lord, by the power of your spirit, Spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray over this situation. We pray comfort for the family right now. We pray, Lord, in the midst of everything that is going on. Oh, Lord, and as Reverend Tracy said earlier on, that all things work together. How in earth can all things work together like in this situation, Father? But you know, 
what this situation is all about. You know the situation that is going on. You know, Father, what was taking place. And in the midst of this, Father, you are still saying to us as a people that we need to still keep our eyes and to keep our focus on you because you have not lost any cases. You are still in absolute and total control of this situation. And so we're asking you comfort the family right now. Strengthen the family right now by the power of your spirit, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, yes. we pray comfort for the friends. Oh, Lord, the friends who have, oh, Lord, felt this at the core of their being. Strengthen, oh, Lord, and comfort even the teachers who are a part of this. Even the services, oh, Lord, who've been there, the, 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 um, <clears throat> the police and the ambulance service who have, who have spoken in this situation and have, have also felt this. Oh, Father, in the midst of this, Father, everyone who has been associated with this, we pray the comfort of your spirit, Lord, right now, and that you will speak into this situation. Lord, we pray right now, Father, for the, the, the family of this young man, Father, who the enemy has used in this situation. Oh, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are praying that your hand would be upon him right where he is now. By the power of your Holy Ghost, arrest him in that situation, Father. We know that the enemy has bound the hearts and the minds of so many of those in the community for all sorts of reasons. But Lord, in the name of Jesus, we stand in the gap and we say, Father, in the midst of this situation, have mercy. In the midst of this situation, have mercy upon the family. We pray, Father, that there would be no reprisals against the family in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But in the, in the midst of this, Father, that you would give us wisdom. You would give us revelation of how we can stand in the gap. Sometimes, Father, even when we saw that Aaron stood in the gap between the living and the dead with the altar of incense representing prayer. So we are standing in the midst of this community with the incense of prayer and no father declaring that the, the incense of life, the incense and the fragrance of who you are and your kingdom and what you want to do in Croydon and in, in other parts of this nation where there are situations that have come to the point, Father, where there is boiling over. We are asking you to speak, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray over the police that your hand would be upon them. Lord, they're in a hard position. At times, Father, they don't know whether to go in or to stay out. They don't know, Father, and situations and even what is going on in, in the reviews and everything, Father. Even in this situation that is happening, Father, in the name of Jesus in London right now. Police are laying down their guns because they don't know what to do. But I'm praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, as Jehoshaphat said, Father, when he called the time of fasting and prayer, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. And so our eyes are upon you in this situation. Where Our eyes are upon you that you will move in whatever way that seems fit for the honor and the glory of your name. And use this, Father, to galvanize and even to bring the community together, bring the congregations together, that we're not in our ivory towers, but, Lord, that we'll be in the place where the community has needs. We pray for Anthony King. We pray that the prayer, that that strength would be upon him, Father. Help him, Father, as he stands in the gap.
Often he stands in the gap, Father. Oh, Father, let the power of your spirit rest upon him in the name of Jesus. And I pray for every pastor who is standing in the gap, every pastor over congregations who may not know what to do in a situation like this. I'm asking you, Father, by the power of your spirit, Lord, that you would give wisdom, that you would give revelation in the knowledge of you, that the eyes of our understanding might be enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of our calling, what is the glory of the inheritance of the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of your power towards us who believe, according to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Messiah, when you raised him from the dead, and you seated, seated him at your own right and in the heavens, far above all principality and power, and mights and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. Father, give us the wisdom that we need. Give us the revelation that we need, that we, Father, we will stand in our place, and we will declare that in the midst of this, and in the midst of situations where our churches are situated, Father, that we would stand relevant, that we would stand in our place, and that by the name of your son, Jesus, lives would be changed and transformed. So, Father, we release this to you, and we're asking you for your hand upon us, Father. Strengthen us, guide us, direct us, give us wisdom in what to do and how, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Lord, we give you the praise. Come, Holy Ghost, give us wisdom. Give us revelation. What we need to do, Father. We're in dire straits in our situations, but Lord, you have the answer. In the name of Jesus, we declare, we declare that you are in control. We declare, we declare it now in the midst of everything that is happening. We declare, we decree and we declare in the mighty name of Jesus that Lord, those cities that you have placed us in, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you have not placed us there to just fit in. You've placed us there to be salt and light and to affect the environment. Holy Ghost, help us. Give us a fresh anointing in this season, Father, for the call that you've placed upon our hearts. Burn our hearts with what is on your heart, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayer in Jesus. God be praised. Um, God be praised. Come on, just let's just give God some praise because we know that he's already... Yeah. He's already on Hallelujah. job. He's already Hallelujah. On job. Hallelujah. 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 He's already on job. Hallelujah. 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 Glory Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. Glory Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We rejoice Hallelujah. in you. Thank you, Lord. We rejoice 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 in you. Father, 
praise break when you need to hallelujah um thank you so much i am just back um not only to give god praise but just to say that as a part of our response um we have on tuesday and wednesday a check-in for young people um even as this meeting began as well um a psychotherapist I'll, I'll speak to bishop hay about this she offered her services as well um, for any young people we as adults we're in bits the young people they are f- afraid there are lots of things that are going on in them as well so the district youth um we've got a check in i've asked the team to check in but anybody is welcome to come i'll tell you this i saw a few young people on the way um, and they, what they said about Eliane was that they, they realised and recognised that she was a Christian. And they said to me, um, Rachel, we want to draw near to God. So we just give God thanks and praise that her life was a testimony in that way. But we recognise, we recognise, hallelujah, hallelujah. We recognise that there are people who now, young people who now, because of this, are open they need God and 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 not only do they need God they're willing they're fearful they understand who God is I met another young lady on the uh, on site and she said she goes to the Baptist one of the Baptist churches and I said well where are you with God and she told me not where I need to be I said well it's time to get right she said yes it is so these these young people these are the people that they they're affected by this and and so there is a space for them to come and speak. Um, as I said, Bishop Hale, I'll um, speak to you about the psychotherapist who, as we were praying, made herself available for both days um, just to be in the room as well in case there was any support needed. OK, so I'll share that. You don't need to be from the district of West Croydon to come along or to share with your young people. OK, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to proceed to our last prayer point of the evening, which will be led by Andrea Nelson from Aubrey, and we'll be praying on the relevant church, loving God's world. Good evening, good evening. Um, Yeah, this evening, so it's been such a blessing so far. It has been such a blessing. It is an honour to be here and to gather together for such a time as this because if ever a time of prayer was needed, it was definitely now. It was definitely now. So I have been asked to to pray on the relevant church and God's world. God's world. So the scripture I've been given is Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20. And it reads, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. 
when I read that, when I read that scripture, it says to me, it just, it helps me to think about where am I as an individual? Am I relevant? So when we talk about being a relevant church, we, we always look at, okay, so is NTCG a relevant church in today's society? But a question I'm asking myself is, am I relevant as an individual? Are we relevant to our non-Christian friends, family members and work colleagues? And when I say that, what I mean is, firstly, do they know that we are Christians? And not just because we say we go to church on a Sunday, not just because we say we go to Bible study, not just because we can quote scripture, because a lot of our non-Christ believers can quote scripture. So that doesn't make us, that doesn't mean that people will view us as Christians. But I'm asking, do they see Christ in us on a daily basis? Would they come to us for advice and prayer when they're going through difficult times, when they've tried everything of man and they know that actually this is not a situation that man can deal with. I need someone else. Would they come to us and say, tell me about your God, the God that allows you to smile when times are at their most difficult, when times are at their hardest, when they're dealing with the situations of now where they're losing children. Do you know what I mean? Would they come to us and say, Tell me about your God. Can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? Do you know what I mean? And do they see us at work dealing with situations that are negative when people are not respectful to us, don't treat us well? Do they see us responding with love and with grace? Or do they see us responding with frustration and anger? So we, as individuals, need to be relevant to our family members, as I said, because that is the world that we live in. We're most relevant to the people who we are surrounded by in our really small circles, but our really small circle has a ripple effect. You know, the scripture tells us to go forth and teach nations. This is an individual instruction. It's not a denominational instruction. So it's, it, it didn't say, okay, NTCG as a whole, you go forth and teach and, and teach all the nation. It says, Andrea, you go forth and teach a nation. Brother Linford, you go forth and teach nations. Bishop Grandison, you go forth and teach. So we all have our individual mandates. And can you imagine if we take responsibility as individuals, how relevant our church as a whole will be? If we go, if we just take responsibility for what we can change as individuals, then what what say would what would NTCG be? What would we be if if you and I, Reverend Rachel? First time I've met you, you blessed me. You blessed me. What would we be as individuals if we just looked up, looked in ourselves and said, okay, what change can I make in myself? What can I do in my community? How can I affect change in the people that I am around? What would what would NTC, what changes could we make? We would rock the world. We would rock the world for and it would all be for the glory of God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? But I'm not going to, I'm not giving a word. I've just come to do that small part. So I just want to pray into just us being relevant as individuals, because that is our mandate to do what we can do as individuals to affect the body, because we all have our part to play. Uh, just let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for this opportunity. Firstly, Lord, we just worship you because we know that through you, all things are possible. There is nothing that you cannot do. Father God, even in this situation where, where, where parents are grieving the loss of their daughter, Father God, you are bringing children, you are bringing young men and women to you. You are shining your light, Lord. Nobody else could do that but you, God. We just worship you for allowing us to be in these situations for such a time as this so we can affect change. I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to show grace, to show love. Father God, to just speak life into these situations where the enemy would have, would want to have it, to, to bring darkness, to bring doom and to bring gloom. Lord, and this is not a situation where ordinarily light would shine, but Lord, you are the light and you've placed us here to be your light and your hands extended. I pray, Lord, that you will bless the works of our hands as we go forth and we try and make, and we work towards making change within our communities. Lord, I have, I have always wholeheartedly believed that each and every one of our churches is strategically placed where they are placed for a particular reason, Father God. We, are not, we haven't just planted churches randomly. Father God, you have said it needs to be here because they need you here. Lord, and help us to recognize that we are needed. Help us not to just go to church on a Sunday and just to put on our pretty clothes and our big hats and the street, but Lord, to make a difference to engage with people as they're walking past our church buildings. 
to engage with people as they're going about their daily business. And Lord, just to conversating with people, just asking them, how are you? And meaning it, and meaning it, Father God. Just engaging with people, Father God, and just to, just to find out what is going on in people's lives, because that is where we will make a difference when we engage in conversation, as it was, as it was spoke about, spoken about earlier. When we can talk to people, when we can engage with people, Father God, there is change. And Father, going to help us to not do this just randomly, but Father God, to do everything with prayer and with wisdom directly from you. So that we know exactly where we're going and who we're speaking to, Father God. And you will place the words in our heart as long as we consult you first. Let nothing be done of self, but everything be done by you and through you. Because without you, we can't do anything, Lord. We need you. We need the Holy Spirit within us to show us what we need to do. Father God, I just thank you because you are mighty. You are mighty, Father God. And we worship you. We worship you in all your glory, Father God. We just worship you. Lord, you are wonderful. We just worship you. In our times of need, in our times of celebration, you are wonderful, Lord. We thank you and we worship you, Lord. And I thank you for gathering each and every one of us on this call this evening and those who are tuned in online, Father God, for such a time as this. This was not a mistake. This was not an accident. This is not, this is not by chance. Everything was ordained by you, Lord, from the beginning of time before we were even considered. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In your name that is above every single name, I praise, I worship, and I thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are mighty in all things. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 Thank you, Andrea. Hallelujah. Mm. You know, way to one this evening. Amen. We've moved things this evening. Amen. And there's still a few more things to move. Um, we're going to go into the Padlet requests. And I just want to read these out so that we can pray and we can continue to pray. I know we are running a bit behind, but so, okay, we're moving God's time, amen. So there's a prayer request saying to pray for two teen families. As a 19-year-old girl and an 18-year-old boy both died today in a car crash. And another 18-year-old boy has, is in a critical condition. The doctors are not giving good news, but we are praying for comfort for the families of those affected and healing for the young man, amen. So we are going to pray on that. We are also, there's also a request out for saying we need to pray for our young people especially on the subject of grieving with all the deaths that's been going on it grieves my heart really and that is one of a request and finally we have a request praying for though praying for um please can i request a prayer as one who works with young young offenders and praying for our young people who have gotten to that part of the road and those who work with them that they are they have the strength to continue to bring them back because all are savable amen and so if we can just pray for that collectively because i believe there's an issue when it comes to our youth when it comes to our young people and the violence that is going on and so father god we just thank you and we bless you and god right now we just pray lord for our young people who are grieving, oh God, for the family of those two young people who have passed in a car accident and for the family and for that young boy who is still in a critical, condi critical condition, we know you are a miracle moving God. We know, Lord, that you can do all things but fail. And so right now, Father God, we are asking to step into that situation. We are asking to step into that hospital, step into that young man's life, Lord. Let healing be in the room, oh God. That, their fam that him and his family can turn around and testify of your goodness, of your grace, of your mercy, of your healing power. We pray right now, Father God, for their friends and their friends that are affected, Lord. We pray right now, Father God, that you shall, be, you shall bring a spirit of comfort to all these young people who are facing grief at this moment. And we pray, God, that as they grieve, they know you are there. They will turn to nobody else and nothing else but you as their source of strength and source of comfort in this time. That nothing shall shake their faith in you. 
that all these things shall build them in you, O God, cover them. And we pray right now, Father God, for the young offenders, O Lord. We pray, God, that every single influence that is not of you, that is upon their life, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray, Lord, that we bind it, that nothing shall be able to touch these young people, that they shall see your face and see your light and only follow your path, O God, that your word shall be a light unto their path. We pray, God, for those who are working with them and pray for our youth leaders and youth directors within our churches, God, that you shall strengthen us and empower us to continue to work, to save, to engage and help and support these young people, the young people in our community, in our churches, oh God. I pray right now, God, that you will answer these requests and others that have been made in people's hearts but have not been able to say it out loud. I pray you'll answer them in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I just want to hand over back to Reverend Linford. Yes. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God, praise God. Just want to give God praise. You know, we've prayed strategically tonight, and I believe that we've, we've walked in victory in our prayer, that we've overcome, um, that we've plowed new grounds, we've created new pathways. And um, I give God praise for that. We've prayed that that we would continue to develop a love for God's word. We would we pray that we would be mobilized as God's church. And we've prayed that we would reach into God's world. And, and we know that we're praying relevant prayers and we are a relevant people and a relevant church. So we give God praise for that. Thank you so much for joining. Um, just before we go, I don't know, Bishop Grandison, if you've got anything to, to say and encourage us out with, and then we'll go. Um, um, thank you. Thank you, Rev. And, and um, again, good evening, everyone. It's just been a blessing to be part of the, the prayer that is happening here. Um, please don't take it for granted what, what God is doing in and amongst us in terms of our, our prayer. Um, things are being shifted. And you're right, Raekwon. You know, something shifted tonight. Something got moved and you know, the, even in, I, I look at the, the gestation period of, say, for instance, a dog and an elephant and the periods that they will be pregnant for are much longer compared to like a dog. And, you know, don't worry about how long things are taking to come into fruition. What you're carrying, as one person said, when you give birth to it, the impact is going to be so much greater. And... What, they go, what it goes on to do will be so much more powerful. So as I shared with the folks in Hansworth, don't lose, don't, don't give up on what you're carrying. It is of great weight, but it's of great value. Um, and let us continue to tra travail in prayer. The things that God has birthed in our spirit, um, please do not give up on those things. Don't become discouraged by what people say or what people don't say, um, carry it full term. I dare say that God will birth something of a revival in and through us and through this church. Um, so that's that's all I will share and say. And guys, I'm so I'm so pleased that you continue to meet as um, Engine Room 2.0, and I pray that God will continue to do great things through and through us. Praise God. God bless you, Bishop. Thank you so much. And don't forget, you can have more Engine Room. Engine Room, um, just Engine Room, is on the 4th of October. And that's yeah, the, the, real, the real Engine Room. And the real Engine Room, the original, the original Engine Room, the real Engine Room, is um, the 4th of October, and that's 10.30 uh, till 12.30 daytime. And then the next engine room 2.0 is 27th of October, 7.30 till 9 and tonight, 9.30. Um, so God bless you. Have a great, if you want to give, um, just before we leave, as I close, we're going to have a slide that's going to um, show you how you can give and support the church as we are a relevant church. Um, so God bless you. Have a great evening. Thank you so much. Go in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Good night. Just
when I lift up your name. In every place, every home, we just want to give you glory.
Oh, we worship you. 